In this problem, we have a degree four equation. This is called a quartic equation. And we have to answer a few questions. So in part A, we have to list the possible rational roots of this equation. In part B, we have to find a root. And we'll do that using synthetic division and the answers from part A. And then in part C, we have to find um, the rest of the roots. Let's go ahead and work through it. So we'll start uh, by doing part A, so finding the possible rational roots. So you always look at the last number here, which is the constant term, over the leading coefficient here. So it's always factors of the last number, or of the constant term, so factors of 4, over, and then factors of the leading coefficient, so factors of 1. So the factors of 4 are plus or minus 1, plus or minus 2, and plus or minus 4. And the factors of 1 are just plus or minus 1. So it's always factors of the last one over factors of the first one. So factors of the constant term over factors of the leading coefficient. And then 1 over 1 is equal to 1. 2 over 1 is equal to 2 and 4 over 1 is equal to 4. It's really important to have the plus or minus 2. Don't forget uh, the plus or minus. And this is part A. That's part A. Part B, we have to find a root. So basically, we just have to pick one of these numbers and then use synthetic division. And we're going to keep doing that until we get a remainder of 0. So if we pick a number and we get a remainder of 0, then we know that that is a root. So let's start by just trying the number 1. So let's check 1. So to check 1, you put a 1 here like this. And then you write down the coefficients of your polynomial. So 1, negative 2, negative 5, 8, and 4. And then you draw a line. And then you start the synthetic division process. So you bring down the 1. That's the first thing you do. 1 times 1 is 1. You add here and you get negative 1. Negative 1 times 1 is negative 1. You add and you get negative 6. Negative 6 times 1 is negative 6. You add and you get 2. Oh no, 2 times 1 is 2. You add, you get 6. This is not good. Let me just double check that. 1, 1 times 1 is 1. We add these, we get negative 1. Negative 1 times 1 is negative 1. We add these, we get negative 6. Negative 6 times 1 is negative 6. We add and get 2. 2 times 1 is 2. We add and get 6. Not good, right? We want to get 0. So what do we do now? We try a different number. Let's try, um, let's try negative 1. So let's check. Negative 1. So negative 1, and then we do the same thing. So 1, negative 2, negative 5. You end up getting really good at synthetic division if you do a couple of these problems. <laughs> Over, and then you start the process. You bring down the 1. 1 times negative 1 is negative 1. We add these, and that will give us negative 3. Negative 3 times negative 1 is 3. We add these and we get negative 2. Negative 2 times negative 1 is 2. We add these, we get 10. 10 times negative 1 is negative 10. We add and we get negative 6. No, also not good, right? 1 and get 0. Let me just double check. 1, 1 times negative 1 is negative 1. Add and get negative 3. Negative 3 times negative 1 is 3. Add, you get negative 2. Negative 2 times negative 1 is 2. Add, you get 10. 10 times negative 1 is negative 10. Add, no good. Okay, let's try 2 and really hope that works. Let's check. I'll do it over here. Check. Check 2. Check 2. So 2. I have not done this problem, by the way. This is, uh, so, you know, if I would have, I would have cheated. <laughs> and I would have picked a number that I knew would have worked. But that's better just to see how it goes. Why do I start with 1 and negative 1? Usually they work. So now I'm going to try 2 and hope it works. So 1, bring down the 1. 1 times 2 is 2. We add, we get 0. Okay. 0 times 2 is uh, 0. We add, we get uh, negative 5. Negative 5 times 2 is negative 10. We add, we get negative 2. Negative 2 times 2 is negative 4. Oh, look at that. 0. So what does this mean? This means that x equals 2 is a root. So this is the answer to part B. We have found one of the answers that's really, really good. So the answer to part B is 2. So now what we do is we go back to the original, 
and notice that this is a degree four. Okay, so now what you do is you take you take this piece here. Let me use a different color, and you start at one less. So we were at x to the fourth. So we have to start with x cubed. So it's one times x cubed plus, and then the next one is zero. I mean, you just go down the line in powers x squared minus five times x minus two and then you set it equal to zero so you always start at one less so now we have x cubed minus 5x minus two so for example if the original one was x to the fifth this would be a four okay so it's always one less so now what do you do well you start the whole process all over again right from the beginning we have a cubic equation we have to solve it Let's look at the possible rational roots. So possible, you want to keep you want to keep repeating your process until you get down to a quadratic, because then you can always use like the quadratic formula. So what are the possible rational roots? Well, it's the factors of negative two. So factors of negative two over factors of one. So factors of one. So factors of negative 2 are 1 and 2, so plus or minus 1, plus or minus 2, over the factors of 1, which is plus or minus 1. So 1 over 1 is 1, so we have plus or minus 1. 2 over 1 is 2, we have plus or minus 2. But we know something. We know something already that's going to make our life easier. We know that 1 and negative 1 did not work at all, right? So, the, so if they didn't work before, they're not going to work here. Uh, we know that 2 worked before, okay, 2 did work before, and it might work again. That, that is a rare possibility, so it is possible for 2 to work again. Uh, but just because it's not always likely, let's start by checking negative 2. So check negative 2. Sometimes it does work twice, though. That can happen. So when you check negative 2, you're now using, uh, you're now using this, okay? So you write down the negative 2. You put your little symbol here, and then it's 1. And here's the tricky part. There's really an, an invisible 0x squared here. It's missing. You have to fill it in. Okay, so 0, and then negative 5, and then negative 2. So any missing powers have to be filled in with zeros. And now let's do the synthetic division process. So bring down the 1. 1 times negative 2 is negative 2. We add, and we get negative 2. Negative 2 times negative 2 is 4. We add and we get negative 1. Negative 1 times negative 2 is 2. We add and we get 0. We are pros. This means that x equals negative 2 is one of our answers, right? Whenever you get a remainder of 0, that's one of your, one of your roots. So now, this is cubic. So we start at 1 less, so squared. So we use this, just like we did before, except it's 1 less. So it'll be 1 times x squared minus 2 times x minus 1 equals 0. So this will be x squared minus 2x minus 1 equals 0. And this looks like it factors nicely, uh, but do not be fooled. I'm pretty sure it doesn't. So we have a couple options here. We can use the quadratic formula or we can complete the square. I'm really leaning towards completing the square, so I'm going to take that approach. To complete the square, we're going to isolate this piece here. So we'll add 1 to both sides. So you have x squared minus 2x equals 1. And remember, when you complete the square, you basically take the coefficient of x, which is negative 2, you divide it by 2, and you square it. So that's negative 1 squared, which is 1. So negative 2 over 2 is negative 1. Negative 1 squared is 1. You can do it in your head. Then you just add that to both sides. So you get x squared minus 2x plus 1 equals, and then 1 plus 1 is 2. This magically factors. This is always going to look like this. x, parentheses, parentheses, and 2. And then you take this number and divide it by 2. So you get 1, and you keep the sign. And that's equal to 2. Again, Completing the square means you first isolate this stuff here, take the negative 2, divide it by 2, you get negative 1, and then you square negative 1, and you get 1. And that's the number you add to both sides. And then after you do that, 
this piece will always like magically factor into this. That's the whole point of completing the square. And you just write your parentheses, the x and the 2. You keep the sign and then just divide by 2 always. Now we're looking for um, x and it's being squared here. So we'll take the square root of both sides. When you do that, when you take the square root and you have a variable squared, you always get a plus or minus. So this is plus or minus the square root of 2. To finish, we just add 1 to both sides. And so we end up with x equals 1 plus or minus the square root of 2. So there we have it. We have all of our answers. Let's go back uh, to the beginning. Wow, what a problem. Um, so our first answer was 2. Okay, so 2. Epic problem. So 2, then negative 2, and then we have 1 plus the square root of 2, and then 1 minus the square root of 2. So we have successfully solved this quartic equation using algebra. I hope this video has been helpful to someone in the world. Good luck.